the work week. And then you know what our favorite night is? Thursday. Thursday night. Because tomorrow's Friday. Actually, you think it would be Friday, but it's not. It's Thursday night. The Americans never want this. Thursday night is the favorite night because they know tomorrow's Friday. And then you know what you get to do again? Sunday night, we start getting sick all over again. Now, I'm 33 years old doing that, and I'm thinking, there ain't no way out of this thing. And I get asked to see Russ, and I immediately sign up. This is not a million-dollar decision. I love those people. A guy last night came up to me down in Orlando, and he said, you proved to me that this works. I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a school teacher. I said, how long have you been teaching school? He said, four years. I said, how many more years till you can retire? He said, 26 more years I can retire. And he's asking me to prove something works? I said, you're looking dead flat in the face, dead straight at it at 26 more years of being broke if you don't do something. That don't have to be this, but go do something. I'm not going to convince him or you or anybody else to do anything. If that doesn't bother a person a little bit, there's nothing I can say or nothing you can say to help them. So just, just kind of leave them alone. But anyway, he said, well, i got to tell you, I'm signing up as an area coordinator tonight. And that was, I think, $590. So he said, I'm going to do that because I just took a couple of graduate courses last summer that cost me more than that. I did the same thing. I took graduate courses paying $200 $300 for three-hour courses knowing I'd never have a chance to make $100,000 a year or two hundred, or three hundred, or five hundred, or a million. I knew it when I did it, and I sober. And I still signed up to do that. <laughs> you know why? Because that's normal. And that's most of what I talk about, is most of us come from normal people with normal backgrounds. Normal will get you nowhere, and it'll get me nowhere. On the money side, one percent of the people in this country make hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. One percent. If you make that, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, believe me, $120,000 a year, you're broke. I mean, that's dead, flat, honest to goodness broke. But only 1% of the people in this country do that. So normal, I might, it would suggest, is something you... Well, I love the people, too. Now, you know what they come back and say? And I know they've said it to you. Yeah, but money ain't everything. You know what they say? Money ain't everything. Well, you know something? Uh, that's really right, and I can prove it. The people with $10 million are really no happier than the people with $9 million. <laughs> that's the truth. Maybe money's not everything, but it sends kids to school. It builds churches, too. It pays for education, too. You know, most of us in the, in the South, and I know Kentucky, we're kind of in between, but we still think South. Uh, most of us think there's some kind of holiness in being broke. We, you know, like, if we're broke on earth, we're going to go to a higher place in heaven. Yeah, that's right. We're going to go to a higher place because we were, you know, we walked around, we broke our whole life. There's nowhere, that's not true. Because you can do more good and help more people. If the right people in this country had the money in their hands, there'd be more good done in this country. But the people with the money want people like me and you to stay right where we are. That's what they want. I'm not going to preach. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but that's exactly what those people want us thinking. They don't want the son of a Baptist preacher and school teacher thinking he can do anything. They want me right where I was. And they want you right where you are too. The price you will pay for success in this business or any business is nothing compared to the reward. It's nothing. If you're financially independent, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, it's like talking Greek to you. Believe me, financial independence is worth any price. Legally and morally, it's worth any price you could pay. So the, that argument don't work. I love those people too. I wouldn't miss my family for nothing. Well, you're going to do it in the next 20 or 30 or 40 years. Wouldn't you rather go do it in two or three? I would. And that's all that's happened with me and the rest of these people. I've condensed down 40 years of work, and I did it, condensed it down into about two years. It only makes sense for that two years you're going to be busy to not have to do a blasted thing the rest of your life. I mean, that's fun. It's fun not getting... You know, most of us at jobs, you know what we do? We get up the same time every day without an alarm clock. We brush our teeth at the same time on Good Morning America, same segment. 
We know we need to be leaving the house at about the same time because we know if that weather thing, or we've got it timed out, we know we've got to be walking out the door at that segment. Little, little robots having fun, ain't we? Huh? We're having a lot of fun. A lot of fun out there. I mean, who, who wants to live like that? But if you don't know another side and you don't know another way, you don't know any different. You're like a dime that's lost and don't know it's lost. You just don't know another way. And this showed me a way that I could go do something and maybe go do something to be financially independent. Rejection. That's something I had to get over. Rejection, the best definition I ever saw on it, rejection is wounded self-love. Most of us love ourselves so much we can't imagine somebody not liking doing the same things we do. And so when they say, no, I don't like that or I don't want to do that, we just get all torn up and cry. Just, I can't repeat Al's cry, but we cry like that. Oh, gosh, Aunt Susie didn't like... We love ourselves so much, we can't believe they don't like what we like. You know something, what I say around the country? Don't like yourself so much. Don't love yourself. It ain't no big deal. In Kentucky, I tell it all the time, there are more people than there are deer. And we hunt deer and kill them on purpose in Kentucky. There's more people out there than you can count. You can never run out of people. Don't you let one person tell you you can't be successful. Don't you let five people tell you you can't be successful. Because those people don't care about you. I mean, where are all those people going to be in two or three years? You know what they're going to be doing? I went back to my school. I know you've done the same thing. 61 teachers in my school. You know how many became customers? One. One person became a customer. When you go back to your prison, don't you expect the rest of the prisoners to be excited that you're trying to break out. <laughs> the fact of it is, they're going to shoot you square in the back. That's right. That's people. That's the nature of people. And you ain't going to change that, and I'm not going to either. I can say I ain't here. I like that. <laughs> I don't even have to watch what I'm saying here. It's kind of fun to talk to, to people like in my home state. But don't worry about those people. Just move on. People say, I've gone to everybody at my work, you know, and, uh, boy, I, I just don't. That, that's just not. Just keep moving. Keep moving. It took me three weeks to get my first MR, and I say this, but in the last 60 days, there's been into the tens of thousands of people come in my ED code. And, and I didn't bring a one of them in. Not a one of them. And, and matter of fact, I was looking at cutting back from five days a week to four days a week, and my income went up. Now, I'm seriously thinking about cutting back to... No, I'm not, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm not. But, but for the point of the story, I had said earlier, I'm thinking about just quitting. I think I could really take off then. My business would really explode. That's the way this works. You work for a while, get a few people started. They work. It's, that's what it's all about. It's just getting started and getting going. So don't let rejection bother you. It's not that big a deal. Uh, I love these people too. I don't think I will. I don't think I won't do that. You know, the issue is not really that you or I want to do this, is it? Excel is a great company and a great company to work with. But the issue is not really that we want to do this, is it? That's not the issue. I can't wait to go be in the long distance business. Isn't that exciting? Oh, man, I can't wait. I can get up. I think long distance all the time. I mean, folks, on a good day, I can't even spell telecommunications. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? That's not what this is about. You know, people say, well, now, they, he don't look too smart. He don't really dress that good. He all, Who cares? I, you know, they all talk about his customers. I've got 29 personal customers is all I've got. I've brought 30 MRs in this business. That's all. Three of those 30 have worked it hard. But from those three have come tens and tens and tens of thousands of representatives. That's the deal. That's what Excel asked me to do. They didn't ask me, and I, now, I'm not condemning that, but they didn't ask me, and, and most of us aren't going to do what Al did. I, can, I probably couldn't do that. But, but Excel doesn't ask me to do that. Excel asked me to go get a few customers and a few people started. That's all it asked me to do. It don't ask me to be a brain surgeon or a rocket scientist, thank God. I can't do that. But I can do this. And that's all it takes, just getting started with just a few people and a few customers. Uh, so, so don't worry. And then the issue is not really that I want to keep going like I'm going. We've had a hectic week this week. We started in Lexington. We've started, we went to Nashville. 
We've been to Orlando here and in New York City from here. Well, you know, there's prob I'd probably rather be playing golf sometime, you know? And there's going to be a day when I'm going to do it. The issue is not that I want to keep, that I'll just gung-ho about long day. It's a matter of paying a price for a period of two or three or four years, and then you're through. That's it. And I'm afraid right now to stop. I'm scared to death there'll not be another Excel. I really am. And I mean that with all my heart. I'm afraid to stop right now because I'm afraid this is my once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Jay told me the other day, you may have two chances in your life to make a lot of money. And I may have already missed my first one. I don't know. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But this is the second one if I did, and I ain't blowing this one. I'm not going to blow this one right here. I guarantee you.